my name is Troy Ryan Wood, the creator of the 3D Printing Doctor Who project. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the project, my design process, and how you can download all these templates for free on 3dprintingdoctorwho.com. Character Options has released over 300 different Doctor Who action figures in the official 5.5 inch scale toy range since 2005. But those releases have slowed to a crawl over the last several years, as plastic and production costs go up and profits go down. So many of the classic monsters for the 1963 series remain sadly unrepresented. My goal is to fill in these remaining gaps in our collections with free 3D printable custom action figures that you can print, paint, assemble, and then proudly display on your shelf alongside the rest of your collection. This project has three rules. Rule number one is that I will only make templates available as long as licensed versions of the figures do not exist. This project is meant to supplement the official 5-inch toy line, not supplant it. So while it seems increasingly unlikely that we'll ever get an official Quark or Alpha Centauri figure, if Character Options announces that their next figure is going to be something I've already worked on, I will immediately pull that figure from the lineup. And that's really for the best, since anything that Character Options does release will undoubtedly be of better quality than what you can print at home. We want to make sure that everybody continues to get the very best figures available. Rule number two. Printing figures for yourself or your friends is fine, but nobody is allowed to turn around and start selling these figures for profit on eBay, Etsy, or anywhere else. The same goes for the templates themselves. The entire point of this project is that it's all done for free and done as a labor of love where nobody's making any money off of it. If I find out that people are circumventing the rules, I will immediately pull all templates from circulation, past, present, and future, which would really suck for everyone since I plan on releasing new figures every few months for the next five to seven years. Fortunately, I've been doing this for over two years now, and so far everybody has been incredibly supportive and willing to play nice in the sandbox, which encourages me to keep plugging away and doing what I'm doing. Rule number three. This is less of a rule and more of a guideline, but for a variety of reasons, this project is restricted to monsters, vehicles, and play sets from the classic 1963 to 1966 era of Doctor Who only. This is primarily because I want to stay on the good side of the BBC and their lawyers, and the licensing of the modern stuff is a little bit more heavily monitored, but also because most of the monster designs for the modern era were, produ were produced with HD television in mind and are simply far too detailed and complex for me to reproduce accurately compared to their clunky 60s, 70s, and 80s counterparts. I built templates through a variety of methods, but mainly using the free CAD software available on Tinkercad and a few other free tools like Mesh Mixer and Windows 3D Builder. I'm not a professional artist by trade, so you won't be seeing any complicated face sculpts of the Doctor's companions or any other humanoid-looking aliens like the Dominators, Movellans, Vogans, or Draconians. Also, most 3D printers just don't have the level of detail necessary to print recognizable humanoid faces, so for, for the most part, my designs are restricted to smooth, angular shapes like robots or lumpy organics where a little bit of added bumpiness won't all be all that noticeable. I choose my figures based on what I think I have the capacity to sculpt, as well as what I think I can add something special to. Like I said, I'm not a professional, but I am an amateur tinkerer and prop builder, so a lot of the figures I've created have LED light-up features, incorporate magnets, motors, or move in satisfying ways, given the limitations of what can be done on a home printer. I have a very long to-do list posted on the website, but my long-term goal is to make it to at least 100 new figures, and I'm already a quarter of the way there. Before I even open up Tinkercad, I try to gather as much source material as possible, popping in my DVD and going over the televised episodes themselves, as well as whatever behind-the-scenes photos, production sketches, and photos from public events and exhibits like Longleat and Blackpool I can get my hands on. Often what I'm looking for is a combination of up-close surface detail, movement range or lighting patterns, color information, and at least one picture of the robot or alien standing level next to the Doctor, TARDIS, or another figure that already exists in the 5.5 scale range, so I can take caliper measurements and compare the photos to the figures I already own, to try to make sure that everything ends up precisely in the same scale. There are usually a lot of maths involved, though thankfully just fractions and percentage conversions that can be figured out with a handy calculator and a bit of scratch paper. Finding genuine true color photos for the black and white Hartnell and Trout monsters can often be very tough, but I've been very lucky with my design so far and received a lot of help from collectors and fans on Facebook, including some of the people who have worked on restoring and repairing them. Many of the original props didn't survive past the 70s, so in some cases all I've got to go on is a rough home video footage shot by the model makers at Shawcraft, photos from parades and signing events during the 60s and 70s, or the very first Panopticon convention in 1977. 
Designing figures can take weeks to months depending on their complexity, and often require several rounds of test printing to get just right before I feel confident in releasing the templates to the public. As I finish each model, I post them to 3dprintingdoctorwho.com as a Google Drive link that you can download in zip file format, with all the object and STL files you need to print the figures yourself. These files are then fed into the slicer software, the most common of which is Cura, that your printer uses to form a layer-by-layer -layer blueprint that can then be used to print the solid three-dimensional object. There may sometimes be alternate versions of some files, especially for the figures that incorporate LEDs, motors, or other optional add-on components. So make sure you read the accompanying print and paint instructions on the templates page, especially if you're planning on having somebody else print the figures for you or using a commercial print-to-order service like 3D Hubs. Alternatively, experts can also access the original Tinkercad links posted on the same page and play around with the models directly, which may be useful if you need to adapt a design to fit a smaller print area, say you're using a small resin printer, uh, reorient pieces, or just want to try your hand at remixing one of my figures to make it your own. Note that some figures may be more done than others, and it's not unusual for me to go back to tinker with older designs as my skills improve. Often the templates will say whether I consider them a rough beta or finalized design, and may note how well I expect them to print on a standard 100 micron resolution printer, or if you're going to need to spring for a 20 micron resolution printer, or go all the way up to a fancy resin printer. While the majority of my figures are designed to be printed using standard PLA or PETG filament, resin printing is the way of the future, and will mean the difference between something that looks like this, or this. Of course, printing is only half the battle, and often it's your skills as a painter that can make or break a figure. There are a lot of highly skilled customizers out there that have worked miracles even using my older, lower quality figures as a base. In June of 2019, I introduced a new guest template section of the website that includes figures, props, and costume pieces designed by other members of our 3D printing community. If you're a model maker interested in sharing your work with group, feel free to contact me via our Facebook group. Or just stop by if you want to see what I and the other designers are currently working on, or have questions about printing your first model. That's all for now. Check back soon for more videos about future figure releases and the release of our special 8th Doctor TV Movie TARDIS console room playset. Thank you.